Do you believe that a technology exists wherein speech can be encoded and transmitted via microwaves so that it can be heard inside the human skull without the use of a receiver? I became totally immersed in hearing voices. Are you delusional? You could actually hear voices in your head uh, from microwave being the carrier band heating up the temporal lobes. Whenever I hear somebody talking to me about microwaves or stuff like that being zoomed into their head. You are not supposed to be violating people at the level that this is. I think even voice to skull technology should be outlawed. In the 1980s, a firestorm of court cases concerning the satanic and ritual abuse of children swept across the United States and was fueled by the popular media. The stories dump in the ocean, chop up the bodies, these things, they sound like they can't be happening. Ted Gunnerson, respected law enforcement professional recently or retired now from the FBI, former regional director of Los Angeles. Do you, sir, believe that these dreadful allegations of babies being sacrificed are true. I absolutely believe it, without any doubt. San Diego, California resident De La Kiki, born with a rare genetic disorder known as Noonan syndrome, was accused of ritually abusing children. Did you ever intentionally, physically hurt any children? No, I did not. Have you ever tortured any children? No. Have you ever hurt or tortured or killed any animals? No. The satanic ritual abuse allegations, which were so widely sensationalized in the popular media, were eventually labeled a moral panic by most professional and law enforcement entities. And in 1995, even Geraldo Rivera issued an apology for his participation in popularizing the satanic abuse phenomenon. Due to the fact that I had witnessed somewhat of a cover-up of the reality of ritual abuse in my local community due to the maneuvers of reporter Mark Sauer. The evidence is uh, thin at best, specious, and, uh, and uh, frankly does not stand up to the light of day. One of the first things I did was to immediately peruse the news group Alt-Satanism, for instance, and I found a very famous alleged perpetrator on one of these news groups by the name of Lieutenant Colonel Michael Aquino, and I had appellate documents, um, and the appellate documents about his case basically said that he was processed out of the Army in 1990 after a ritual abuse child investigation. He's an admitted Satanist. He runs this, you know, goofy, you know, dark church or whatever, however you want to characterize it. So there's, a, there's enough smoke here that Diana's going to find fire. Is it a force for everything negative? Well, if you're talking about Satanism as legitimate Satanists define it, absolutely not. Does that prove that he's a child abuser, that he's sexually molesting children, or as agents, you know, operating that? Well, of course not. I mean, where's the evidence of that? Lieutenant Colonel Aquino was accused of ritual child abuse while he was stationed at the Presidio Army Base in San Francisco, but he was eventually cleared of all charges. I could not function at work, this new job that I had, and so I didn't pass probation at this new job, and I was let go and I became totally immersed in hearing voices. These people identified themselves as NASA Ames employees. They identified themselves as Livermore Lab. Paranoia is a defense mechanism to de handle with anger. Most people don't like to be angry, and particularly many people like to deny the fact that they are angry. So instead of admitting to themselves or anybody else that they are angry, they devise a system where they project their anger on other people. And I discovered various victims' websites, people who had the same symptoms that I had, and they were referring to what was called voice to skull technology. It's a good thing to speak in terms of delusional systems because there is a whole uh, surrounding area of thought and explanation that goes into their, their initial delusion. And they refer to this website. And the website was called the Center for Army Lessons Learned. And I looked it up, and this website is run by the Army. Usually these delusional systems become more and more elaborate. I looked up a term 
that other victims had been talking about, which was voice to skull devices. They go out and explain to it, it all becomes part of the delusional system. What voice to skull devices say, I have the printout right here, is it says it's a non-lethal weapon, which includes neural electromagnetic device, which uses microwave transmission of sound into the skull of persons or animals by way of pulse modulated microwave radiation. I think it's, it's fair and it's important to say, you know, this does not sound to me like something that uh, I find myself able to believe. There have been recent advances in acoustic technology which can transmit sound great distances with a very narrow target range. The long range acoustic device is one such technology and is currently employed by both military and commercial sea vessels to deter potential attackers. In San Diego, California, Woody Norris, developer of the LRAD, describes another of his acoustic technologies known as hypersonic sound. It's kind of like uh, radio stations, except in this case, you don't need a receiver. To hear a radio station, I gotta have a receiver. With this, the mixing actually happens in the air, and you hear it without any other device. So if I aim it at you, and it happens to hit both of your ears, and I'm reluctant to say this, it'll be as though the sound is inside your head. This time I'll come all the way around in case you're getting a lot of echo from the room. Much of it is people pleading for help because they've been hearing voices in their head for years. And now this technology explains it. If it's my sound, Turn your head, plug your ears, cover your head, sound goes away. If it doesn't, it's not me. Hypersonic sound is perceived through the external ear of the subject and therefore cannot be classified as V2K, the military acronym for voice to skull technology, which relies on a scientifically documented phenomenon known as the microwave auditory effect. The observation of the phenomena came way back during the uh, Second World War, and the, uh, the radar operators you know, accidentally noticed that when they stand in front of the uh, uh, radar, sometimes they can hear uh, clicks in their head. Uh, somebody by the name of uh, Alan Fry who had talked to some of the radar operators based on their uh, report, and he conducted a very simple uh, laboratory experiment indeed showed that human beings can hear the radar pulses. They were not just you know, making it up. They wanted to know what the significance of something like this would be if man had another sensory motor input. And of course, the possibilities are staggering. Like you have another, another sense like sight, only you're not using it. What do you think that would imply? It means you're walking around being blind to something that's constantly giving you inputs, but you're not aware of it. Well, the first implication on that would be a weapon. There was uh, some concerns because uh, the American embassy in Moscow uh, was reported to have been bombarded by microwaves. So the speculation was that, are they trying to gather intelligence or are they trying to actually mess with the brains of the embassy personnel? So there was uh, some experiments being conducted. Of course, then they were involved in some other things which I'm not involved in, which are classified in nature. Dr. Lin configured the equipment for the 1973 experiment performed at the Walter Reed Army Research Institute, wherein the experimenters successfully encoded speech and transmitted it via microwaves. The subject of the experiment, Dr. Joseph C. Sharp, was able to hear the spoken words for one through 10, and the results were published in the Journal of the American Psychological Association. And while Dr. Sharp verified these results during a personal interview with the filmmakers, he declined to have his voice or image recorded, stating that the technology was still too controversial. In ordinary uh, sound perception, sound that goes into the uh, ear canal gets amplified by the small bones in the middle ear and then gets to the inner ear where the cochlea resides and in the cochlea is converted to electrical impulse. But fundamentally, the physical phenomenon that enables it is mechanical movement of particles. 
So the mechanical wave transmitted by the bones of the middle ear gets converted at the inner ear into the uh, electrical impulses. But in the case of a microwave auditory effect, is the source is electromagnetic. So if you expose the biological tissue to a pulse of uh, microwave energy, the tissue expands and induces a vibration. Instead of going through the middle ear, the microwave-induced vibration gets propagated to the inner ear directly, and at the inner ear is converted to electrical impulses again. And in this case, and the vibration in the human tissue, if the tissue is the head, for example, will fall within the auditory range of a human uh, subject. All applicants for voluntary admission are held a minimum of 15 days for examination before they may be released. Now, the question is, have I been suddenly overcome by schizophrenia? Um, my answer to that is that I have been forced on medication for the past four, to four years and not once have any of my voices stopped. What's really going on here? Well, we really don't have the models yet or the belief systems to be able to cope with these things. People now are talking about actually uh, direct communication, like we mentioned, sending a message uh, you know, through the air to a person without anybody else uh, being aware of it. That is within the realm of possibility. If medication does not stop these voices and these people have, and the victims or your clients have a plausible, um, plausible story. This is like another sensory motor input that man has not yet learned how to use. Of course you could, as I say, if you have a high enough power system, you can have a group of people subjected to the same type of a phenomena. There's all kinds of applications there, you know, in terms of making someone think they're crazy. Uh, to hear voices in your head, what do you think that's about? If you started hearing voices in your head and you didn't, it wasn't your voice. I don't know whether it is true or not. I think uh, there's a sizable number of people who think this is being used for mind control. Mind control is right at the top of the list. That obviously is what everybody would like to do, is control everybody's opinion on something, right? I think if somebody who wants to do it there is the potential. Is that going to convince you? Not necessarily, but it will convince me. That convinces me. No, I do not think that I was just suddenly overcome mysteriously by voices, um, just out of the blue.